Grace and peace and spoiler alert for yet another version of The Three Musketeers. I'm watching through my backlog while I'm locked down. Uh, and this is the, the 2011 version. My name's Ryan, I'm the movie pastor. When I watch movies, I'm always thinking theologically, paying attention to what they say and what they mean and how we interpret them in the light of the truth of Christ. And this version is interesting in that respect. In fact, that might be the only respect in which this one's interesting. But this is not a movie review channel. Uh, so, in this version, the Musketeers, the, the Inseparables, the, the three Musketeers, are not heroic. Um, they don't particularly want to save anybody. They are bored uh, and apathetic. Uh, Athos, in particular, the, the sort of leader, the main Musketeer, explicitly says he does not believe in anything. Uh, and there's a line, uh, it, there's a scene early in the film that like sets this all up. What should we drink to? How about the king? He's a child. Cardinal rules in all but name, might as well drink to him. Uh, to France. We served it, fought for it, bled for it, look where it got us. Friendship? Love? <sighs> Word of advice, boy. Trust no one. It must be something you still believe in. This. This. And this. Anyone who tells you otherwise is either a fool or trying to sell you something. I know Athos may seem cold and unfriendly, but don't let it fool you. Deep down. He really is cold and unfriendly. What happened to him? What happens to any man? A woman. You know, I don't want to offend anybody, but I thought you'd all be a little bit more heroic. <laughs> what my esteemed colleague was trying to say in his own way is that we are obsolete. We're warriors. But there's no war for us to fight. And so we drink and brawl and quarrel with the Cardinal's guards, and then we drink some more. <laughs> what we need is a great cause. But there are no great causes left. Which is why I keep telling you it's not too late to do that priest thing again. Beats working for the city. Free booze at wakes and weddings, and then there's the nuns. You were a priest? Until I realized being a man of God and a man of the cloth aren't always the same thing. And so they need a great cause, and that's gonna fix their kind of depression. Um, and you'd think like, okay, cool, simple. It's an action movie, it's about sword fighting, but like we'll have a little character arc here, right? They'll, they'll go from everything is meaningless to like a this was worth it attitude. Um, but but they don't, they, they don't. So um, D'Artagnan likes a girl, and he, uh, he kind of brings this great quest to the, the musketeers, and they explicitly say, ex like diegetically in the film, they say, well, this is not a great cause. This, this is not, well, no. But we'll do it anyway, because like, we got nothing else to do. Um, and then there's uh, a, a plot and, and a series of plot twists, right? Where they like, uh, they're breaking into the Tower of London, but then they're not really breaking into the Tower of London, but then they're not really not really breaking into the Tower of London. So really the only thing that matters is the like the, the sidekick character. Um, and they, then that leads to a, a Zeppelin battle. Cause, Cause why not? And in the Zeppelin battle, there's another like moment, right? There's like a, a climax scene where D'Artagnan has to pick between um, between the girl and then France, between being the hero and being the lover. And uh, you get the same thing. Athos is like, listen, save the woman. Nothing else is worth it. So he's still like, we, we just did this hero thing. We're, we're riding high. We're going to win. But, you know, I don't, I, I don't really believe in anything. I'm, I'm a nihilist. Uh, and then at the end of the film, 
you get the end of the film. Um, they're they're riding off into the sunset. You know, they've they've succeeded finally. There's been some falling action, um, and then the the musketeers ask Athos this question: "Is like, what are we going to do next?" And he says, "Whatever France requires." Um, and they're like, "But Athos, we thought you didn't didn't believe in anything." And he's like, oh, "I believe believe in us." So, so this is a decision. You know, they they, they could have made. The, the plot of the film, A Worthy Cause, they decided not to. They, they could have made it so that like all of Da Vinci's machines were in the Tower of London, right? And unless we break into the Tower of London um, and steal back the plans, then like they're, they're, they're gonna rule the world, right? Then Buckingham is gonna just be overpowered and like, but no, no, like, no, this is pretty much a personal petty feud um, and uh, we're just gonna do it because we do. It, it, they did it on purpose, and and you have to ask why they did it on purpose. And while you're asking why they did it on purpose, we should pay attention to the text itself and notice that, like, just as the plot is meaningless, so is the text. It's, like, it's just not a very good movie, right? And... It's not a movie review channel. Like, I'm not here to tell you don't watch this movie because it's not good. If you enjoy the movie, I love that you enjoy the movie. Like, please go right on enjoying it. And in fact, uh, the director, Paul Thomas Anderson, uh, Paul S. Thompson. Did I just mix Paul Thomas Anderson with Paul S. Thompson? Yeah, Paul S. Anderson has directed, like, some of my all-time favorite bad movies. Shout out to Mortal Kombat. Um, he's, he's also done some really commercially successful bad movies, like Resident Evil. Uh, but this one was neither, and there are a lot of reasons for that. I mean, basically nothing was executed well, uh, despite kind of some promising starts, right? Like, I think the steampunk angle is really interesting. You're, you're gonna add... Uh, advanced technology and zeppelins and stuff to the Three Musketeers story. I'm I'm here for that. Um, the the stunt work and p propensity for stunts, like we're gonna do sweeping camera and stuff that we couldn't do in previous Three Musketeers versions, like that that has promise. The the casting, they've got some some great cast people in the film. Um, Christoph Waltz, Mads Mikkelsen. And Orlando Bloom, who, like, listen, sue me, but Orlando Bloom is the greatest living swashbuckler, right? Like, I, I know he's no Errol Flynn, but you can't get Errol Flynn. They got Orlando Bloom. They got him to be in a Three Musketeers movie. And then they just didn't give him any action scenes. Which, why? Like, like why? And, and why, why do the Zeppelin thing and, like, not play with that and and have fun with that and do like world building and I mean even even the costumes in this where there's like a moment written into the script where the king says no give them new shirts and you're like oh we're gonna see the iconic three musketeers costumes and then they just like don't have them and the costumes they do wear Porthos like never puts his on like it's the whole thing seems to have been done with like almost intentional the, the desire to ruin it, right? Like almost intentional, like, yeah, we're gonna do a thing. We're just not gonna do it well. Um, I, I mean, it's like the whole thing was made by Abe the Catfish. Uh, and, and why? What does it mean? What's what's being said by a text that is so clearly phoned in, uh, th that so clearly lacks polish, and it doesn't seem to be studio interference. It seems to be that that we have the attitude of like we're gonna make a popcorn flick, right? Uh, and none of us are gonna have to work very hard. We're we're not gonna like do method acting and like it enter into the life of the character. We're just gonna kind of show up and play around and shoot it and send it. And it's, uh, it's gonna be fine. It's not gonna be great and it doesn't have to be great because it'll be fine. Which is exactly what you do if nothing matters. 
It's exactly what you do if you have the attitude Athos has in the film. Um, if there is no foundation, if there's no ground of all being, as Paul Tillich said, if there's no moral center to the universe, is there anything worth fighting for? Is there anything worth striving for? I mean, what is the point of making the next Casablanca when you could make 12 paranormal activities and make a lot more money doing it that way? I actually think the movie is a lot more enjoyable when viewed from this lens. I think it actually becomes a pretty brilliant film if you look at it not as a Three Musketeers adaptation, but as a meditation on meaninglessness, as a meditation on absurdity, which uses this classic novel by Alexandre Dumas as a wedge, as, as like something to, to illustrate the, the very idea of meaninglessness itself. I'd, I'd be curious, if you, uh, if you haven't seen the movie and you go back and watch it, I'd really love to see your comments watching it with that attitude. And for the rest of you, I'll see you next time on Movie Pastor.